guys, it's Mrs. Pettis. Today we're going to do a fun project that is so popular on my blog, it's had almost 120,000 views. On my blog, I call it Movement with Lines, and it's a good example of an optical illusion. Optical illusions are something that deceive the eye by appearing to be other than they are, and we've all seen them. But did you know that some fine artists are, use optical illusions in their art? Yep, it's called op art, and you can actually go to a museum and see examples of optical illusions. Here are four op art artists you might want to check out. we're going to be doing can be viewed in a horizontal or vertical format. It's your choice. In my example, these lines appear to wave or curve, but they are really straight lines that I've fiddled with a bit. How does this work? This illusion works because it's two types of lines. The first are actual lines. Actual lines are the lines that are actually there. On the image at the top, there are shapes that look like little Pac-Man dots and lines that have two sides and an angle in between. Those lines and shapes are really in this image. Implied line refers to the path that the viewer's eye takes as it follows shapes, colors, and forms along any given path. In the image on this page, there is no actual triangle, but Pac-Man shapes and angled lines are arranged in a way that makes your eye think it seems like a white triangle. Our eyes see past the Pac-Man shapes and bent lines, and our brain fills in the rest, creating the illusion of an implied triangle. The actual lines of our project are going to be diagonal lines that we're going to draw and color in. When we cut up the actual lines of our project, and then glue them down with the gaps in between them, we will create a sort of implied line. Weird shapes like the triangle on the last slide won't magically appear, but our straight lines will start to look like they curve. Our, our, our eyes are trying to follow the lines in our project, but when we get to the gap and the lines stop, our brain takes over and mentally fills in the lines itself. Because of the weird way we glue the pieces down, our brain thinks the lines curve. Pretty cool, huh? Let's see how we can create our own object. The supplies that you're going to need are two 3x5 index cards, or you could use a 5 by 6 and a half inch piece of paper. Tape to secure the index cards together, a pencil with eraser, ruler, markers, I'm using washable Crayola markers, scissors, a glue stick, and one 9 by 6 inch piece of construction paper. I'm going to use black. To begin, we'll want to prepare our paper. We'll want to line up the two index cards and tape them together. We'll be creating our art on the blank side of the index. But later on, we'll use the line part as a guide for cutting our artwork into sections. I like to put the wider red line section on the outer edge. Use a couple pieces of tape to secure. So now that we've taped the line sides of the index card together, the step two is going to be using our pencil and a ruler to create diagonal lines on the blank side of the index card. 
They can all be the same in size, or you can alternate larger and smaller with them. I wouldn't do too many thin lines unless you want to spend a long time coloring, but it's up to you. Once you have your lines drawn, choose a few colors to color in the lines. You can choose colors you like or choose a few colors based on the color parameters on the color wheel. Color the diagonal lines in with markers. Once you're done coloring, it's time to do a bit of cutting. Flip over the index card to the line side. Use the lines to divide up the back of your drawing into 13 even sections. As you divide up the sections, number them with a pencil. The first larger section of the index card counts as section one. Then work your way across the index card, putting two blue lines per section. If you aren't using an index card with lines, Divide up the back of your drawing into half an inch sections. Make sure you number each section as you go.
Okay, it's time to glue and make the magic happen. Start with script number seven. Use a glue stick to attach section seven to the center of the background paper. Please note, if you are using a larger sheet of paper, like copy paper or construction paper, to make your diagonal drawing, you'll probably have more strips than we do in the demonstration. No matter how many strips you have, this is the point where you would glue the middle strip down. So if you have a total of 24 strips, glue down strip 12 first. Hmm, not very magical at this point, but wait and see. Step six, next glue section six down above section seven. You'll want to glue this strip down, slightly overlapping the previous strip on one side and then have about a half inch gap on the right. Work your way back through the sections, five, four, three, two, and one, gluing each one down in the same way, overlapping the previous strip on one side, and then have about a half inch gap on the right. Make sure that you are gluing each strip down in order and that the number areas are on the same side so that your optical illusion will work. This will create the gradual curve that we're looking for. Now it's time to make the curve wave in the other direction. Glue section eight down below section seven. You'll want to glue the strip down overlapping the previous strip on one side, and then have about a half inch gap on the left. Work your way through the remaining sections. Nine, 10, 11, 12, and 13. Gluing each one down in the same way, overlapping the previous strip on one side, and then have about a half inch gap on the left. Make sure that you're gluing each strip down in order and that the numbered areas are on the same side so that your optical illusion will work. This will create a gradual curve that goes in the other direction. This project is very versatile and can be used in a variety of ways. You can play around with the size of the paper. I've created pieces that start around as small as two and a half by three inches and as big as one by 12. I'm starting off with a piece of paper as big as one by 12. Remember, it will get larger once you cut it up and create the weight. A nine by 12 piece of paper will need a background that's at least 12 inches by eight. Have fun choosing colors. As I said before, choosing colors for this project can be super fun. You can choose colors that you like, colors from the color wheel, or you can choose color from a palette that will give you a certain feel. When I created this example, I thought of how the wavy lines reminded me of the ocean and I was missing the beach. I did a quick search for ocean color palette and found images of beautiful ocean pictures and the colors that remind me of the place I love. Another great technique is using water to blur the boundary of the diagonal lines. I thought that would be perfect in my beach inspired art. Having blended colors would be just like the colors in the water and on the shore. As you can see, this technique works good with any color palette. To create this look, color in the diagonal lines like you did in the first example, except make sure to use washable markers like Crayola. When done, use a paintbrush dipped in water to blend the colors of the lines. Go in the same direction as the line. You don't want to destroy the lines, just blur them slightly. I like to use a good deal of water. In order for the salt to work, the piece needs to be pretty puddly. And then, while it's wet, sprinkle on a little salt create little bursts within the color. The salt is done at the absolute last minute. Once you've sprinkled the salt on, you're done. Do not touch the art until it's totally dry. 
Once this art is dry, proceed the same way as the Inner Painful project, cutting the teeth into strips and gluing them in a curvy loop. These more artsy pieces are perfect to use as a background for your art. Here I used a watercolor version of the project with Zentangle art to create a bookmark. Bookmarks are a great way to use your experiments, and they make great gifts for people. I hope you've enjoyed making a line wave in this great pop art project. I can't wait to see what you've created.